Mr. Speaker, two weeks ago, I was sitting in my constituency office uh, when I got a message from my colleague from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, informing me that there was going to be a special meeting of a small group of us where he would inform us of a very grave and serious situation. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if you've ever uh, received the type of news where you're told you're the target of a cyber attack, but I'll tell you, it's terrifying. It's one of the moments in your life where the blood drains from your face. And as soon as you know the date, January 2021, you wonder, what was I doing that month? What was going on in my life that month? How serious is this attack? It's, it's something I don't want anyone to ever experience again in this chamber or anywhere else in the world, Mr. Speaker, but unfortunately, it happened. You start to wonder then, if this happened to me, this also happened to other colleagues in the House of Commons, then clearly this is also happening within our nation. Who is attempting to obtain what information? And how successful are they? How many attacks like this are going on at this time? And worse than that, Mr. Speaker, this government knew about this attack, and yet they didn't inform me, and they didn't inform my colleagues. It's reprehensible. It's absolutely horrible. I thanked in a video, and I'd like to thank again the Interparliamentary Alliance on China for informing myself and my colleagues that we were the targets of such an attack. I'd also like to thank the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the United States of America for once again doing the heavy lifting that this government should be doing. It's shameful that we should be informed through foreign governments that we are under attack. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, it's not a surprise to me. It's not a surprise at all, because we found out just this past week in the Foreign Interference Report that the former member from Steveston, Richmond East, was not successful in his election campaign as a result of foreign interference. We saw last year, Mr. Speaker, the effects of a foreign government, the same government, the PRC, on the member for Wellington Halton Hills, who sits in this very aisle, Mr. Speaker, who was also the victim of the interference of a foreign government in an attempt to try and gain information on his family and try and intimidate him. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, I had the honour of being the Shadow Minister for Democratic Institutions back in 2018, 2019. And it was that time, Mr. Speaker, I begged the member for Burlington to do something about it at that time, and it fell upon deaf ears, Mr. Speaker. You know, we set up things like the Debates Commission, which housed a member of the We Charity Scandal and was overseen by the former special rapporteur who clearly failed in his mission to try and keep this chamber safe and to keep Canadians safe. We saw the implementation of the toothless, the toothless digital charter, which achieved nothing to protect Canadians and to protect members of this House. We spent hours going over Bill C-76, Mr. Speaker. Bill C-76 where we talked about things like vouching. We talked about things like returning officers. We talked about things like the closing of polls across our nation. And yet, Mr. Speaker, this did very little, very little to solve this problem that is in front of us now, which is, again, foreign interference and, once again, the absence of responsibility of this government to not only do something about foreign interference, but even to have the courtesy, to have the decency, to have the moral placement, to, to let members of this House know that they were under attack and under threat. And yet we didn't get that courtesy, Mr. Speaker, and it is an absolute shame. Once again, we have seen that this government has done too little, too late. And we see this again time and time, Mr. Speaker. We saw this in 2019 when I would try and raise questions with the member for Burlington, with the Prime Minister of Canada. The only response that I would receive is that the Prime Minister had had an indication that there had been some 
interference, some interference in the 2015 election by Russia. Very cold comfort at this time, given what we know now. And 2018, 2019, that election was, my goodness, five years ago now. They've had five years to do something. And, and clearly, they have not spent their time doing anything. They're once again doing what they do best, and that is creating the illusion of doing something, when in fact, they are happy to do nothing. And why? Because as we saw with the member for Wellington Halton Hills, as we saw with the member from Stevenson Richmond East, it benefits them. It benefits them to do nothing. And so they've done nothing, and they'll keep doing nothing. And even if I blame the member for Burlington, Mr. Speaker, I know that this direction was from the top. There is no doubt in my mind that this direction was from the top. And the same thing here, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure that they wanted to ignore this cyber attack, that they wanted to ignore the potential harm they could have caused me, my family, and, and 17 other members of this House. They wanted to turn a blind eye to that. Because that's what they do, Mr. Speaker. They don't want to take responsibility for these types of atrocities that take place against myself, take place against other members of this House, and take place against the Canadian people. Well, the good news about this, Mr. Speaker, is that this will not deter, deter myself, and this will not deter the leader of the official opposition for continuing to stand up for democracy, human rights, and the rule of law not only in this nation, but across the world as well. You will continue to see us, Mr. Speaker, standing side by side with our allies in Taiwan, in Israel, and in Ukraine. And once again, this is something that we do not see this government doing. We see this government picking and choosing winners and losers, speaking out of both sides of their mouths. Again, not only to the harm of people in this House, not only to the harm people of Canadian to the harm of Canadians, but to the harm of people across the world. And as I said, Mr. Speaker, that is because this government will always turn a blind eye. And you know what happens when you turn a blind eye, Mr. Speaker? Evil prevails. Evil prevails in, in this House when this government turns a blind eye. Evil prevails across this country when this government is not willing to take responsibility, as I begged the member of Burlington to do uh, all of those years ago, and evil prevails uh, across the globe. So it is not a surprise, Mr. Speaker, that I was informed after the fact that this government had neglected its responsibility not only to keep our citizens safe, not only to keep members of this chamber safe, that we were that they were informed by a foreign entity, by someone else doing the work that they should be doing, but shame on them. Shame on them for trying to hide it from us, for, from keeping it from us, because they would know once again, Canadians would know once again, that they had shirked their responsibility, that they had not not uh, uh, done what they were supposed to do in overseeing the safety of this House, the safety of the members of this House. But as I said, Mr. Speaker, I have unfortunately seen this time and time uh, ag again. And so it is not a surprise to me at all that we were left in this position, that we were left as targets uh, of, of this foreign government, other foreign governments that are, are looking into us. I'm not naive, Mr. Speaker. I was in the Canadian Foreign Service now being elected to this House, uh, understanding that I'm sure I will always be a target for these foreign governments. But this government was informed by another government, was informed by another organization that is attempting to do the work that they should be doing, and that is keeping Canadians safe, keeping members of this House, Mr. Speaker. We can refer it to PROC, Mr. Speaker. I certainly hope that we do, but I hope it is with greater result than it was the previous times before when we saw Bill 76 come out of PROC with no shield for the members of this House, no shield for Canadians, Mr. Speaker. I hope this time, Mr. Speaker, that this government takes foreign interference seriously, doesn't pretend, and actually does something about it. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Speaker.